Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is the update to the Almost Immortal Warrior for the Blackwood chapter. Now this has been around since the beginning of my channel. First build that was ever released by me. And it is still going very, very strong. Now known as one of, if not the most popular tank in the world. At the moment, if you just count YouTube views. This has been extremely successful and is built to be beefy as hell. It's made to be incredibly strong made to take a punch and also made to provide buffs and bonuses to your groups in two different ways one is survival the other one is damage which ones you decide to take is up to you but either way he can fight the hardest stuff in the game no trouble whatsoever so if you're a new player or an experienced one this is a very hard tank to kill so if you want to see the strongest or if not the toughest tank in the game keep watching it's all coming up So first of all, we're going to go into the stats. We'll make sure we've got our buffs and bonuses on, potions and all that good stuff. Excellent. So we're going to look at the recovery first of all, because that one's going to move. 2.4k. That will go up, believe it or not. But our max magic is 14.7 and our health is 51.5 with a 20k stamp pool. Yes, of course, you could put more into magic if you really wanted to, depending on how you spec your traits, but we can come back to that later. The main purpose of this overall, the way it's designed as far as stats are concerned, is instead of using a big magic bar, because we don't need that, the skills we're using don't scale off of magicka, they scale off of health. Instead of having a big bar, we just fill it quickly so we can use it more often. It's about how quickly you can reuse a skill, not how big the bar is. We'll get more to that later. But our resistances, as you can see, are actually quite healthy. They are on 32.9k and 28.9. So we're almost capped with spell resistance. In fact, really, really close to that. We're only four off of it. But we are slightly off when it comes to physical. All you need is a minor resistance buff from your group and you'll cap out easily. So no problem there whatsoever. 64 points into max health. You can, of course, lower this and go more into stam or mag if you really want to. Bear in mind, the skills we're using scale off of health, so the higher, the better. But, again, it's your choice. And the food we're using is flat health and stamina food. Nothing else. No recovery, no nothing, just flat stuff. Atronarch Mundestone to give us as much mag recovery as possible. And generally, I'm a stage 3 vampire, but we'll go more into that later as to why you might want to do that, or my, why you might not. We are, of course, going to go into the skills in detail, and... If you already understand this, you're more than welcome to skip. But if you do skip, just bear in mind, you might miss out on things that are very, very important for the overall build's design. Now, first up is Igneous Shield. This is the bread and butter for this particular build. It's very, very important, and we are going to want to spam this. But pace your resources to a certain extent, because overspam is not necessarily going to help you in some situations. But overall, this is in the Earth and Heart skill line. Third ability to unlock starts off as Obsidian Shield, more for two Igneous Shield. This will give your group a damage shield and also give you a damage shield depending on how much health you've got so the higher the health the stronger the skill this is your protection for the group and at the same time if you apply this you get major mending for three seconds increasing all healing that you do whether it's your heal or for somebody else as long as you apply it this will buff those so for that purpose you want to use it as much as possible and for protection keep that shield on your group the healers have less of a stressful time Plus, they also can stack with other damage shields. Next up is Green Dragon Blood. This is in a Draconic Power skill line. Third ability to unlock starts off as Dragon Blood Morpher to Green Dragon Blood, not the other one. The other one scales off of Magicka. So, the higher the Magicka or spell damage and all that good stuff, the better it is. This one scales off of your max health. It uses Magicka, but it scales off of max health. So, the more health you have, the more effective this is. It will heal you based on 33% of your missing health. So either way, whether you're a 20k tank, which is not a tank, that's squishy as hell, or a 50k tank, 33% is a flat percentage, yes, but the chunk will be larger the more health you have, so the less often you have to use this to heal. If you're very, very low health and you crit this, that percentage gap that you will gain from can be very, very large. And of course, Major Mendon. Activate your shield first, and your heal is 38% of your missing health, not 33%. Shield first, heal second. Also, while it's active, it does act as a buff, which gives you increased healing um, done. 
and or healing receive rather not done and also you get health recovery and stam recovery health recovery is a bit meh because we're vampire anyway but stam recovery is quite useful when you're not blocking vitality by the way minor vitality is healing received so if you do apply a heal this healing done can make it stronger at base healing received is boosting it after you've received it those two are very important. Do not spam your heal. Use it when you need to. You can go very low and utilize this at an oh shit moment rather than over and over and over. Now, of course, the bread and butter for any tank is a taunt. The first ability you unlock in the sword and board skill line is puncture, morph it to pierce armor. If you stab the target, they will attack you for 15 seconds and you will apply major breach and minor breach at the same time removing 2.9k resistances and a further 5.9k resistances both of those are minor and major and yes minor and major stack minor minor doesn't major major doesn't minor major does if you apply this it will last for 15 seconds in both forms the resistance debuff and the taunt so the group hit that enemy harder and the boss wants to hit you or any target that you taunt do not, I repeat, do not let this run out. 15 second timer, overlap it before it finishes. That is efficient. 15 second timer, let it run out and then reapply it. That's not efficient. Don't do that. It will punch someone. If you want to keep control of an enemy in the Elder Scrolls Online, make sure you apply a taunt and maintain it. Elusive Mist is our vampire skill, believe it or not. We are, of course, taking advantage of stage four three vampire most of the time again we're going to come over that with passives but what this does it starts off as misform morph it to elusive mist if you activate this anything that's not a major boss like the big one anything else anything that hits you with a heavy attack won't knock you over while this is active you can't fall over you're immune to mobilization and immunity uh to disabling effects overall as well so you can't be stunned you can't be knocked down all that good stuff but bosses will still knock you over however even if they knock you over this has a really nice bonus. It does make you run fast while you're using it, and it drains magic per second, so you can't recover while this is active. But you will actually take 75% less damage. There's some mechanics of the game that you can actually go into mist form and borderline avoid all the damage, um, including things like the big fire phase in Asylum Sanctorium, for example. That phase, if you activate mist form, you can't be healed during it, but you take hardly any damage per tick. Also, Bloodroot Forge, if you get the Shalks on you as the tank and you activate Misform, you can just sit in Misform until the dot is gone and then come out and you'll be fine. Very helpful, especially against the Axe in Alfarian Archive as well, which I've mentioned for the last four years for this particular build. If you're running out of resources for God knows what reason and you activate this while they're heavy attacking you, they'll hit nothing but air. They will just hit you with a heavy attack. You'll take hardly any damage whatsoever. You won't fall over. Once they've all finished, pop yourself out of this form and heavy attack them back to gain your resources. It's a very good oh shit button. But if you don't want to use that, you can, of course, get mesmerized and morph that into hypnosis, which will allow you to stun multiple areas, uh, multiple enemies instead. So the choice is yours. You can use the the stun CC, or you can use your get out of jail free button. It's very, very helpful. Bone Surge is also really, really good alongside your Igneous Shields from the Undaunted skill line. So that's off as Bone Shield, morph it to Bone Surge. This also scales off your max health. The higher your health, the stronger this is. Igneous Shield costs magic, gives you a damage shield. This costs stamina, gives you a damage shield. But while this one applies it to the group straight away, this one requires someone to take a synergy. If they do, other people in the group will have a damage shield equivalent to 30% of their max health. Again, the higher their health, the bigger the shield. And they get major vitality, increasing the healing received. So if they take this bone shield, after you've hit Ignis shields, after you've applied a heal to them, if you do, because there is one in the build, then of course they benefit from healing done and healing received all at the same time. That will make more sense later, but it helps. Stack the shields if you want, or use one or the other, depending on how your bars are at the time. But someone must take this synergy. Encourage your group to take that. Um, our ultimate on the front bar is our oh shit button. Don't leave home without this, especially on the almost immortal warrior. It's in a sword and board skill line. You will need 50 to unlock this, but starts off a shield wall, more for two shield discipline. Very simple. For eight seconds, you now block for nothing. No resources used, no stamina used, you run at full speed, you can dodge roll and jump and do shapes and stuff as much as you want. And while it's active, all of your sword and board skills are free. Meaning this taunt here costs you nothing. Activate your block ulti, stab stuff, or heavy attack from underneath it if your resources are so low that you need to heavy attack to get your stuff back. 
very tactical skill, very useful in lots of different situations. And you can even use it to res people because while you're blocking, you can still res from underneath this. Very handy. Back bar. Sanguine Altar is done on purpose because of the sets we're using, but you want it anyway because it's just really, really cool. Undaunted skill line starts off as Blood Altar, morph it to Sanguine Altar. You can morph it to the other one if you prefer, but it doesn't last as long, but it does give a bigger heal. This costs us health, so basically nothing because we've got loads of health. And while it's on the ground for 34 seconds in a 28 meter radius, so 56 meters across from you in the middle, um, what you have to consider is this will actually heal your group every one second if they're doing damage to the targets caught inside of it. But they can take a synergy as well if their health goes low and the synergy they take will give them back 40% of their max health. Maximum, not missing. And they can crit based on their own stats. So while this is a heal you give them, the crits and stuff come off of their own stats. And all they have to do is hit stuff. And you can do this too. Any light attacks, heavy attacks, taunts, anything that you're doing that does any form of damage will also heal you. As well as your dragon blood and all that good stuff. Just remember you can't of course heal while you're in misform. Don't let this run out, you will need it for one of your sets. Unstoppable Brute is in the heavy armor skill line. You do need to have five pieces of heavy armor equipped to use this, but starts off as unstoppable, morph it to unstoppable brute. Don't morph it into immovable or the other one, whichever it's called, which is blue, not orange, because that one will cause you some problems. You'll actually be stuck on the ground. But this will give you a major resistance buff. If you've got a warden in your group, you won't necessarily need it, but if you haven't, then you want to utilize this. Yes, of course, you could use the Dragon Knight version of this particular skill, which costs Magicka, but we don't want to do that. We want high mag recovery so we can spam our mag abilities and not add extra mag abilities that will consume more resources. We want this buff either way. But for picking this one instead of the other one, we use the opposite pool. We use stamina, so you will need to heavy attack occasionally to keep this up. And it will make you ignore knockdowns. So while Mist Form is quite handy for some of that, especially getting out of roots and stuff, this will actually give you a knockdown resistant and disable effect resistant for six seconds just for applying it. Now this does give you also a reduction to break free cost per heavy armor piece worn, so we've got a really good bonus to this because we're full heavy. Next up is your range taunt. This is in the Undaunted skill line. Starts off as in a fire morph it to inner rage. This does cost magicka. It can taunt from 28 meters away. It's very, very handy. And it's got a synergy attached to it as well. So if someone's far enough away, they can activate this and it'll do big bursts of error of effect magic damage. So basically you've got your close up taunt, which has got a debuff on it and your long range taunt. If they won't come in from range, then of course a range taunt is gonna be needed. But once you can reach them, you wanna stab them regardless. Bear in mind, of course, if something's 28 meters away from you and it's a ranged target, you will need to get out of their range for them to chase you and come to you. You can utilize that in content, deliberately overshooting the group that you're with so they come to you and then come back in again to meet them in the middle. Melee stuff will come with you all the time, ranged stuff will not. It takes a little bit of work and you will have to understand how enemy aggro is manipulated, especially during range, but this is very, very useful for keeping it off the squishies. Next is Unrelent and Grip, another way to keep things off the squishies. This is not a taunt at all, unless you have a certain five piece set in the game. Tormentor, look it up, it's all there. But this is a pull ability. This does not taunt. However, if you were the first one to hit them, it's likely that you've probably got aggro by default, but it doesn't always work that way. This is just a ranged manipulation ability. You will pull a target to your feet if they can be crowd controlled. If they can't, then you won't. You have to work more with a ranged taunt. But the idea is, pull it in, stab it, it's now with you. That's it. But bear in mind, if you try to pull something that can't be pulled, because it's CC immune by default, that's its rules, or it was recently stunned, the Magicka that cost will be refunded. Also, you can't dodge this, which is quite handy in PvP. We're not going over that today, but just note it anyway. Token Talons is your control ability once they are at your feet. So whether you've had to run backwards range-wise and come back in again to get them where you want them, or if you've chained them in and they're where you want them, you want to make sure they stand still. So you want Choken Talons, which is Dark Talons, first of all. Morph it to this. And all enemies caught inside of this, up to six, will actually be affected with Minor Maim, reducing all the damage they do, which is handy. But at the same time, they are all immobilized for four seconds. Immobilization and stun i.e. chain, because chain pulls are stuns also, are on different CC um, rules, and they can both be applied at the same time. So you can chain stuff, and then you can pin stuff. Now, the maim does last 10 seconds, while the immobilization lasts 4, but if you can maintain this indefinitely throughout your ad pulls, then you can have a lot more control, and things don't run around the room. Backbar ulti is a choice. So... 
first of all, we've got Aggressive Warhorn. This is from the Assault skill line. You get it from PvP, but if you go into Battlegrounds, I mean, as long as you actually participate in the, the Battlegrounds themselves, you will always get points, even if you lose, which is really handy. But, starts off as Warhorn, morph it to Aggressive Warhorn. Activating this will give the group 10% max magic and stamina, and at the same time, you'll give them a major crit bonus, so major force, increasing all of their critical damage they do by 10 seconds, or 4 10 seconds. 30 second max resources, 10 second crit damage. Activate this as and when you can, especially if you want a kind of a burst moment for your group, or if you just want to give them resources in general, just keep this coming. It's an expensive ultimate. This is very, very useful for our resources because we do have a passive that can benefit from this. But if your group isn't one of those groups that can really benefit from Warhorn, you're not doing a lot of damage, but you just want more survival, or maybe the mechanics warrant more survival anyway, you can go with Magma Shell, which is from the, um, the Earth and Heart skill line. Starts off as Magma Armor, morph it to Magma Shell. Activate this and you will be Borderline Immortal for 12 seconds. It will only ever allow you to take damage equivalent of 3% of your maximum health per hit, regardless of how hard the hit is, unless it's a designed one-shot. And when activated, nearby allies get a 10-second 100% max health damage shield, which also stacks with Bone Shield and Ignis Shield. So lots and lots of protection from damage shields and very, very chunky for you, alongside CC immunity and resistance. And also giving the group some heals, or you can give them some damage if you prefer. Don't forget, you also have your oh shit button when it comes to your ultimate, so you can res people from under a shield. Now, as far as survival is concerned, Magma Shell is not necessarily stronger than the Block Ulti. Depends on the situation. This is more for your group. For you, Block Ulti and then Heavy Attack and Maintain from underneath it. Magma Shell, you are not blocking now, and if you do block, you're going to use the resources you just spent. So, it depends on the situation. Now, passives. So, if you apply Burn or Poison, this is important, by the way, you will do 50% more damage than anybody else that applies that. So if you use any form of poison damage whatsoever or any fire damage whatsoever, you can apply those status effects. And if you apply burning, you'll get magic back. If you apply poisoned, you'll get stamina back. Pay attention to that. You're going to need it later. Uh, fire as far as we're concerned here, by the way. Unrelenting grip is fire and choking talons is fire. That was unrelenting grip. I don't know what came out of my face, but there you go. Those two can apply it. Um... Now, when it comes to these, you're not going to necessarily want all of them. When you deal direct damage with an Ardent Flame ability, you reduce the enemy's movement speed. That is useful for when you chain somebody in so they don't run away again. But if you've got your talons on already, this has already run out before you pin them or even when you do pin them. So you never really get the snare. So that's a choice you can make if you've got the spare points. This increases the damage over time from abilities we're not using, so don't get that. And this increases damage of your air of effect flame abilities. Technically, this does count as air of effect and it does do flame. So you can have that if you really want to, but it's not make or break. You really don't need it because we're not built for damage as such. This skill line is quite important. This increases the amount of damage you can block. This will give you a healing receive bonus for having a draconic power active ability. So this will give you minor vitality and this will give you extra healing received. They do stack. So keep this running all the time and you'll constantly have this nice bonus to healing received. That's going to help because we've got a set that will heal us. Um, this increases your health recovery for each Draconic Power ability slotted on your bar. Not massively important for us, but get it anyway because what you do gain from this passive as well is you get insta-cast abilities that are melee ranged with an extension of range. So instead of being 5 meters, your light attack, heavy attack, taunt, all that good stuff, you've actually got 7. So you can stand back a bit in some mechanics where the boss is static, so you don't have to be up the enemy's nose. And this increases your spell resistance, which is why our spell resistance is higher than our physical. Earth and Heart, of course, this is your bread and butter for your Dragon Knight. Increase the duration of Earth and Heart abilities. Longer Igni Shield, longer Magma Shell, if you need it. Battle Roar, if you use an ultimate, every single point cost of the skill will give you 46 of every resource back. Use your expensive one as much as possible. Use the small one for oh shit and heavy attack from underneath it. Each time you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you gain minor brutality for you and the group, increasing their weapon damage by 10% for 20 seconds. So basically, if you're spamming Igneous Shields to give people a damage shield, and another one, and another one, and so on and so forth, then of course you will keep this up all the time. And if you use an Earth and Heart ability at least once every 6 seconds, in fact once every 6 seconds maximum, because anything other than that won't count, you will get 3 ultimate back. So as long as you do keep applying this skill, you'll constantly get ultimate. 
but don't go too faster than six seconds if you're building ulti, but you can go faster than six seconds if you just want to spam it for protection. It's up to you. Also, another good excuse to spam it is if you do use it, it does cost magicka. You do have high magic recovery. You can spam it more than most people. You don't need another skill to apply extra magicka to your bar to apply this afterwards, which is a long way around. You just press it and you get stamina back, even while blocking. So, high recovery allows you to spam this to protect you in the group. High health makes this stronger. High spamming of this allows you to get more stamina back, even while you're blocking stuff. Really handy. Heavy attack, hit, heavy attack, hit with this, and you'll generally keep up your stamina all the time. And then when you are in extreme mechanics, you need to block all the time, you can still use this from underneath it. We are using sword and board on both bars. Yes, I know, someone's screaming ice stuff. I have a build which is double ice stuff. It's a tank that blows up rooms that applies minor brittle all day long. We don't need it on every single build. This one is designed for sword and board on purpose. Always was. Now, this will reduce the stamina cost of your one hand and shield abilities by 15% and reduces the cost of blocking. This will increase the weapon damage of this skill line, which is not massively important, but it does also um, increase the amount of damage we can block, which is handy. This improves your standard bash attacks, giving them more damage, but it's not that important. But what is important is they cost less. This will make you block more projectiles, so you have a higher resistance to stuff like that. And this will allow you a movement speed bonus while blocking, because normally blocking slows you right down. We're a little bit faster. We're using nothing but heavy armor for the most part, depending on the version of the build you are using. So, if you're using a Healy version of the build, you're going to have a light piece in there. If you're using a more damage-focused version of the build, which helps the group do more damage, then you're going to have 7 heavy. For the one I'm demonstrating at the moment, I said 7 heavy earlier, we're actually using 6. We are using this light bonus here. Ignore these, you can read them in your own time. I'm not going to go through them in the video, but these are important for us because this will reduce the effectiveness of snares, so we're not too slow, and reduce the cost of sprinting. Fair enough. This will increase your mag recovery. This is very important. We have high magical recovery. We want that. We have reduction to cost. We want that as well. Also, extra resistances. Spell crit rating, which is not massively important for most people, but we are using a skill that scales off of your critical chance because our dragon blood can crit so you do want a little bit and this will give us penetration for spell we're not utilizing that at all so you can actually dump this passive but these ones you are going to want that's if you're using the one piece of light like we are we're using that to close the gap because our recovery and our reduction of cost needs to be higher because we are a stage three vampire most of the time and our costs will go up this on the other hand seven or six depending on your build Increases your physical and spell resistance. So if you do have um, the 7 heavy, you will have a little bit more physical. This will increase your health recovery and the amount of resources you get back while being hit. This will increase your maximum health by 12%, but there is a bonus from Undaunted coming up. And this will increase your Magicka and Stamina return if you heavy attack per piece worn. And this will increase your healing received. Heavy attack is key. You must heavy attack if you're not being hit by heavy attack yourself. Know what can hit you and not kill you and use those windows of opportunity. Now, the vampire side of things, why have we chosen this? So, stage one is for Dark Stalker. It will make you sneak without penalty, so you can move fast. That's actually quite helpful in some content, especially March of Sacrifices. But above all, what we want is this. If you have Undeath and you're stage three or higher, you will actually start taking less and less damage the less health you have. So the more health you have missing, the safer it is for you to pop Dragon Blood and get a bigger heal, which helps your resources because you don't have to spam it and run out. And of course, you can stay low for longer because of this. You take much, much less damage to the less health you have in your bar right now. This also applies to fire. You can actually somewhat negate some of the fire damage you take as a vampire by having this undeath passive. Meaning, yes, this build can be a vampire and tank the really hard hard hitting fire stuff no trouble even in vss i've managed to tank the fire dragon with three atros yes i know sometimes shit happens and still be fine while the healer was getting res by somebody else you are fine as a stage three but your costs will go up we have allowed for that in the build when we get to the gear that will make more sense if you're not comfortable with the undeath passive and you think subconsciously that fire is going to kill you every single time you stand in it then of course you don't have to be a vampire if you don't want to up to you i would recommend it though because it's nuts now we don't need any of this stuff we do need undaunted every time you take a synergy you get resources back including a heal take every synergy you see and you get a two percent increase to health magic and stamina depending on how many different types of armor you're wearing 
We're using two at the moment, so we get a 4% bonus. If you're wearing one, you'll get a 2% bonus. Bear in mind, by the way, our health will not be affected because this has given us an extra 2% health for having that light piece. If you had seven heavy, you would remove that bonus, but you get 2% back from the heavy passives. So they counter each other out. We are, of course, at Imperial. Massive health bonus, massive stand bonus, reduction to cost for everything included ultimates. The reason we want that is because our costs go up as a vampire. Very helpful indeed. And of course, get medicinal use. If your potions are greyed out, obviously, we're now benefiting from a full up time on our potions. If your potions are not greyed out, pop it. So you can take advantage of this. We're using tripods, by the way. Now to the gear. There's lots of different options here. Ish. There's a few options. <clears throat> so, what we've got is we've got leeching on the front bar with axe or sword or dagger. It doesn't make a difference. You can use whatever you want because the one hand piece doesn't give you any benefits or negatives if you're only holding one of them. So don't panic. Use any piece you like. The sword actually drops on the last boss in ICP. The shield actually drops off of the quest. It's a, it's a reward for the quest. And that particular one talks to you. So get that. Anyway, defending and reinforced on the front with health on the shield. And you can use a crusher. You can use a damage shield. You can even use poisons if you want. The glyph really doesn't matter at this point. Customize that how you want. But proc sets changed. So this has max health, healing received and max health. Very tanky. And when you take damage... The target who damaged you will have a poison cloud underneath them. And any enemies around them will also have a poison cloud underneath them because it's AoE. And it will deal damage every one second for five seconds. And then it can restart again as soon as it's gone. Read very carefully. When you do the damage, you will heal 100% back. That can scale dramatically. So the more damage it does, the more healing it does for you. And your healing done from your Ignis Shields buff and your healing received from your Vitality will enhance this furthermore. Once it gets to you, it's a big heal and it ticks very, very fast and multiple targets count as multiple heals. It's not one heal per second, it's one heal per second per target. And big enemies sometimes take up more because of how much space they take, so it can be really, really beneficial. Now, this scales off of your maximum health, so this set on a low health tank is useless. You must have high health. Otherwise, that proc is much, much lower. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, we're in a group. And we've got, I don't know, a warden. Giving us minor toughness. So we've now got 55.9k health. That makes the set give us a 1.5, almost 1.6k heal every single second per target. Healing received and healing done on top of that, we can actually end up in excess of a couple K, sometimes a K and a half, sometimes three, depending on the buffs and bonuses you receive in your group, K per second per enemy. So a big stack, if you're a good tank and you stack things up, you've got five enemies in there, you can end up with 15K heal a second easily and more. It's very, very strong. You're really hard to kill. You don't need babysitting by the healer. And now the healer can focus on the squishies. You are providing damage shields for them and you. You are providing a heal for you that's so bloody strong you don't need anyone looking after you. And now you can focus on all the big stuff while everyone else focuses on all the little stuff or just hitting the big stuff in general. The other set we're using is a swap out. We've got this on the back bar, but we have got four pieces on the front. We've done it in this way by putting three pieces on the jewelry with a belt. So you've got four pieces there. But we put it on the back bar because we can only control it on the back bar. Winter's Respite Sword and Board with three jewelry pieces will give you the five piece when you swap. We've taken this piece on the belt so that we can take advantage of the four piece bonus with the extra magicka and the light armor as well, which is handy. You don't want this to be divines, by the way. You want it to be sturdy. I've done that wrong. Now, when you swap bars, we have one ground based ability that heals everyone. Looks like this. As you can see, heals. And Ignis Shields makes the heal stronger. Every two seconds, you'll heal your group. So, what are we doing here? We are healing ourselves just by getting hit and being very strong. And we're healing the group just by putting a heal ability on the ground. So they do damage, they heal, they stand in this, they heal. We give them Igneous Shields, they stay alive. You get the idea. You're doing everything. The monster set is Stone Keepers. This has three different individual flat stats. And if you block... Every single time you block, you will actually stack up a charge up to six and you will gain, after it's popped, 2.4k stamina and magicka 
and you'll heal for 2.5k. That heal scales off of healing done and received as well. After 14 seconds has gone after the pop, you can do it again. Now, if you don't think you need the resource gain, if you don't struggle without this, you can heighten your flat stats if you want and go with one piece of Baron, which will mean you've got the three piece bonus or three stat bonuses on the one piece twice. So you see this bonus here for the one, Magicka, Stamina and Health. You can actually have it twice, they stack. Or you can use anything else you want. You can use a health recovery, which I wouldn't recommend. You can use a mag recovery. You can use a max health. You can use any flat stat from One Piece monster set you want. But you do want to make sure you're using this. Blood Lord's Embrace. Bash the target. You will get 1.6k Magicka back every second. And you've already got nearly 3k mag recovery. I know I showed you earlier, it's 2.6. We get to the champion points. We're going to show you how that's not. Now, what else can you do? We've single barred Winter's Respite. We've single barred Leechin. So if you do need to die, swap bars and just stand still. If you stay on this one, you're not going to die very quickly. Now, if you want to change sets, you're more than welcome to. You can actually use... I've got these in here somewhere. You can use Galloway, which is amazing. If you block, you can provide the group within power, which makes light and heavy attacks do 40% more damage. And this can constantly proc left, right and center. Every two seconds, you can give people a three second buff. This is very strong, especially if you're using easy sorks and off balance. And if you're using something that just doesn't have Empower in its own build anyway. Really handy to use. Or you can have Bands of Imperium, which will give damage shields all the time to your group. Or you can use a couple of these. You've got uh, Yonokrin, which I don't think I picked up. Where did I put that? There you go. This one, if you taunt, you give minor courage to the group, increasing their weapon to spell damage. So you've got one that gives everyone a buff from blocking, or you've got this that gives them one from taunting. Either way, you're going to do that, so that's easy. Or you can take advantage of one of the newer sets. This one will actually give major force to the group. Now, I wouldn't recommend it on this particular build, but you might want to remember this for later, because it does mean any ultimate will give them a crit bonus. Or you can use this. If you heavy attack the target, all the target needs to do is take damage for the next 10 seconds. 5% of it will burst and be given to the whole group in form of stamina and magicka. So when you heavy attack to get your resources back, you plant a bomb, everyone else benefits. It's not extra damage for them, but they can sustain longer. The choice is yours. But overall, the top ones that I would choose are between Winter's Respite for the Healy stuff, Gallimway for more damage from lights and heavies, or Yolnacrin for the minor courage. The choice is absolutely up to you. So to recap over that, Legion on the front, Winter's Respite on the back with Blood Lord's Embrace and a monster set. If you want to use one of the other sets and they're heavy and you want it all the time, you could put Yolo on the back. But if you want it on the front, you'll have to go Leech and Sword and Board on both bars with three pieces. Then your other set in three pieces. Two pieces on the body, which means helmet or shoulder and Blood Lord's Embrace. Just remember, of course, if you're not on the Leech and Bar, if you don't have a double barred, you won't be getting heals. You have to proc it on the front bar. You can swap and keep it running, but it's very short. Champion points. Very simple. This stuff is all defense, really. I mean, we don't need any of this. We don't need any of this. So you don't need to get this stuff. You don't need to get this stuff. But if you do unlock this and you go down the martial route, you can, of course, increase your status effect here, which means if you do apply poison status effects, you will have more chance to do that in future with this passive. And that means that you can get stamina back more often from your leeching firing. If you have this side, any fire you do has a heightened chance for status effects, which means more burning, which means more magic back. So this is helpful, but it's not essential. Anyway, those are base passives. You will inevitably get them. No rush. What you do want to do, though, is get these two here. So you've got your max stamina and your max magic. But either one of the two, whichever one you unlock, you'll have actually have this. This will give you all of your healing received and damage reduction bonuses, which are huge. So you want to get those. And that's pretty much it. As far as the flat passives are concerned, just get them in your own time. But you do want the slottables. So, 10 points in this tree here, in the healing received one, will unlock this section. Which means you can get Jeweler's Rebuff, you can get Enduring Resolve, and you can get Unassailable. These are important. Your slottables are important. Aim for these first, fill the rest out later. In the meantime, in this tree, you have an option. Which, whenever you heal yourself or an ally under 25% health, so you heal yourself or them, they just stand in Winter's Respite, job done, you'll give them a damage shield. So if you are using the Winter's Respite version of the build, get this. 
it's really strong. You'll give an 11k damage shield to members in your group. Each target has a 30 second cooldown on this, but it's huge. Now, if you don't need that, or you don't need one of these, so maybe there's no AoE in the fight, whatever, you can mix and match them and unlock this. If you heal yourself under 25% health, you'll remove a negative effect, all negative effects, in fact, from you. So if you're in a fight that's mostly single target and damage over time, or single target and AoE, or AoE and damage over time, and you don't have a full combination of them all, drop one of these and replace it with this, and you can actually just take off negative effects. In fact, if the damage over time is a negative effect that affects you on your buff timers or debuff timers rather than something that's in the room static, you don't actually need this because you can cleanse it if you go too low. So you've got five individual slottables to take advantage of. These three and the cleanse if you're not using the healing set. This healing bonus and the cleanse and two others if you are. Now the green tree I haven't gone over at all because quite frankly you don't need any of these. These are all quality of life, craft and running around out in the world and all the rest of it. But you may want to take advantage of this so that you've got less chance to use a charge on your weapon. So you don't have to use soul gems so much. You want this so you have higher quality chest um, loot. You'll want this one so you actually have a movement speed bonus. So you have a 20% movement speed bonus between fights. This will actually have a chance to not even use a potion. And this will increase your food by up to 30 minutes. Any food. So they're helpful. And on the healing area, or not the healing area, the tanky area, you need four slottables. And these are very easy to unlock. This doesn't need anything, nor does this, nor does this. Health recovery, mag recovery, stamina recovery, armor, and health. Those three don't need anything before this. So get them as soon as you can. You've got a health bonus here, which you can unlock on this path. But again, that's a passive. You're going to get those. And this one here, once you have unlocked the beginning part of here, you can unlock this. When you are in a crowd control situation and you are immune to it, so if you even if you pop immovable, you get 200 extra recovery. So, again, slottables are key. The four blue ones here, you've got a choice with a swap out there. Four green ones, up to you. That's all quality of life. It's not that important. But the red ones, those are what you want. Now, to demonstrate that, we have a set amount of recovery right now, which is 2.1k. If we pop immovable... 2.4. If we are in a situation where we are getting buffs and bonuses, let's pop immovable again. We're actually on 2.6. And if you get a small bonus from champion points from a healer, which we didn't go over, but you can do it in another video, you can actually make that go up to 3k. So it depends on how they're built, but you can go very, very high. And on top of that, as you can see, there's a red debuff on the target. Every time he hits me, if he was a boss, I get 1.6k back a second. Recovery is insane. Absolutely insane. And of course, if you do heal yourself or somebody else when they're really low, this is how you heal someone else, nice and easy, they can have a damage shield on them which stacks with this and this. And your magma shell if you had it on. Now it's time for fashion. So, if you haven't seen this before, this is on the website already, but Divine Prosecutor Helmet on the head. Heavy, by the way. Worm Cult Chest, Hands, Legs, and Feet, all heavy. Dramaphra Light Belt, and Imperial Four Shoulders in heavy. Now, the colors we're using, oh, we're also weapons, I forgot about those. Lord Warden Axe with Shield of Senshell Shields. Shield? That was weird. Lord Warden Axe on the back with a Lord Warden Shield. Now, I would recommend you have a different weapon on the front and back so you can differentiate between the two because it gets muddly up sometimes. But as long as your shield is different, you should be able to tell which bar you're on. That happens. Now, the colors, we're actually using three different colors. For the blacks or grays, we're actually using this here, which is Thalmor Black. But you can use whatever you want. And for Warriors Steel, that's the rest of it. That's the main base coat, basically, for everything. So anything that looks kind of a grayish sort of color, it's not. It's actually that purple color. There's only one or two areas where we put the black in. And the red is Hollow Fang um, from... I've forgotten the name of the DLC. Maybe someone will put that in the comment section. But anyway, that's going to be on the website. There is an image there showing you all the different colors and everything and where they go. And that's about it. Keep your damage shields up. Keep your buffs up. Chain stuff in. Pin it up. Taunt it. 
Don't drop them. Keep your block up when you have to. Miss form if you get in trouble. Block ulti if you need to res someone. We'll take practice. All good tanks get killed to start with. But if you get really good, that's when things start getting a bit nuts. Anyway, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach this particular build. It's been very, very popular over the last four years, but it's still getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Absolutely insane. And the fact that it's got high health means that its sets now benefit it much more than it did before. If you're not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. As is the notification bell if you want to know when the next videos are going up. And of course, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website ZarnoGaming.com. And don't forget, I live stream on Twitch every night except Wednesdays. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.